I just had a world shattering thought. Yes. Is it every word just an onomatopoeia for what the word sounds like? No. Why not? Because language inherently, the words we use inherently have nothing to do with what they are. Nothing about apple reflects the sound an apple makes. But the word apple reflects the sound that the word apple makes. Like I'm saying written language ruined the meme. (laughs) (laughs) Are you? (laughs) Yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying onomatopoeias are the pharmacon. warning that I'm editing into the beginning of the episode, we're going to talk about kinks and masturbation because Joyce talks about kinks and masturbation. You've been warned. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, and welcome to Homestuck, the Internet's Ulysses. Or Hachu for short. This is the podcast where we compare Homestuck and Ulysses bit by manageable bit. I'm your co-host, Jamie, resident history of language and writing major. And I'm your co-host, Kira, resident feral boy. (laughs) You can find me at K-I-Y-Y-E on Tumblr and Patreon and K-I-Y-Y-E-S on Instagram. And you can find me at jamietamar.wordpress.com and on Instagram as jamietamar. That's J-A-I-M-E-T-A-M-A-R. Now, last episode, we were stupid. And by we, I mean me, because I forgot to get a quote. Our quotes from the last episode now. Do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll, I'll just reiterate my uh, very impactful quote for you, which is, you eat a weird bug and don't even care, in reference to Jade fantasizing about being an anthropomorphic animal person. So it's very, very, very touching. Okay, my quote, Kira did a quote from, what was that quote about Pulitzer Prizes? What was that from? Oh, that was from a couple episodes ago. That was um, the Hussey commentary about right. him being the final boss in the literature world. Right. Well, my this quote is actually from Portrait because last when we were recording the last episode, I was reading a chapter of Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man for my Irish Lit class. And this is a very good quote that's very long, but it has the word language in it, so I have to read it. But the nightshade of his friend's listlessness seemed to be diffusing in the air around him a tenuous and deadly exhalation, and he found himself glancing from one casual word to another on his right or left in stolid wonder that they had been so silently emptied of instantaneous sense, until every mean shop legend bound his mind like the words of a spell, and his soul shriveled up sighing with age as he walked on in a lane among heaps of a dead language. Wow. That's about Stephen Daedalus being angsty in Dublin. What's new? (laughs) Yeah, what's, what's, what's new about that? Very sexy. You wanna, you wanna start with your question, or you want me to go with my question? Uh, yeah, I'll start. Okay. What is Leopold distracted by while McCoy is talking to him at the post office? There's kind of two answers. Um, the letter that, the sexy letter he wants to read, and the lady in the car. Yes. Hell yeah, I know everything about Ulysses. Both of those things. Okay. Is that two points? Um, I, there's four questions here, and, like, if you get them all right, I'll just, like, give you an extra point, because they're kind of all, they are kind of all, have, like, that one had, like, kind of two parts. It was more like an either-or thing, just, like, you, I would give you one point for either of them. Okay. The next one's one, then the next question is, like, three point three parts, but, like, technically one point, and then the la- next one's, like, really long. So I'll just kind of figure it out. Also, you have we'll, more points than me. We'll figure it out. I do have more points than you. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me hit you with that first question. Here's a great one. How many clocks are in the felt mansion? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> um, thousands, right? Is that your final answer? No, but am I even close? Yes. Okay. Is it 4,000? Is that your final answer? Sure. No, it's 1,000. Okay. It's exactly 1,000. Not counting for, like, clocks in different timelines as different clocks. Okay, let me see if I wrote that down. I did not write that down, so I'm just not... I don't have a memory. That's fine. <laughs> they they keep a big total that they keep coming back to about how many clocks have been destroyed, and it's, like, always something out of 1,000. So that's right. the yeah. only reason why I remembered and put it in a question. Right. That's Yeah, that's a valid question. Let's see when I read Homestuck. It was uh, last Wednesday. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, I read it just now, so I just read Ulysses like an hour ago, so me also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, my question: Who is Martha, and what does she ask Leopold about his wife? Uh, Martha. Oh, that's the pen pal. Mm-hmm. And she wants to know his wife's perfume scent. Yep. I don't quite know why. <laughs> Me neither, man. Some kinky shit. <laughs> We're allowed to talk about kinks on the podcast. Oh my god! We I should have. I should have just like said what I wanted to say and like not made it a thing because now you're now you're gonna like title the episode. We're allowed to talk about kinks on the podcast or something. <laughs> just because you said that, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is what you get for making me be the editor. I get all the episode title jurisdiction powers. <laughs> going absolutely feral with those titles oh my god <laughs> next question <laughs> okay what is the title of hearts boxcars illicit magazine red cheeks yes Did i wrote it down because i was like is that a parallel to titbits <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i was literally thinking what does this remind me of in ulysses and then it I, I didn't occur to me right now until right now that it was the sexy magazine well, Titbits is technically apparently not a sexy magazine. It just is like Tidbits, but British Isles version. Well, yeah, and Heart Red Cheeks is essentially not a sexy magazine because it's probably just a bunch of pictures of hearts. But like, <laughs> same thing with the licorice one. Yeah, valid. Not the same thing with Diamonds Drugs one, though. That one has real ladies on it. Right, yeah. All right, hit me with another question. What are the three buildings Leopold visits during this episode? The the post office, mm -hmm. the alchemy shop, or whatever. The the drugstore. <laughs> yeah, okay, you can tell I've been reading a bunch of Dirk Jang fan fiction. Well, they call it the chemist, but that's just like a British Isles words for like pharmacy. Great, okay, so it's not an alchemist shop, it's a drugstore. Mm -hmm. and... It's CVS, it's, it's Ulysses CVS. <laughs> Got it, Ulysses CVS. That's a contender for episode title too. Um... <laughs> And he thinks about going to the bath. But... Yeah, and it like no, it's like you're. I think mean, you're overthinking it. It's like the three places are like really obvious. Like he spends a considerable amount of time there. The bank. The pl oh, the church. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, forgot. Okay, here's one that is not a name of a thing. It's a little more thought provoking. Well, it's just a fact, an important fact. Why can't Spade Slick? Or anyone else kill Snowman. Something about destroying the universe if they do. Yep. I don't get why. You shouldn't yet. But I remember him saying we can't kill her because they'll uh, destroy the universe. Yeah. That and was also, answer. I'm so gay for her. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I am because I texted you about it like four times while I was reading. Yes. <laughs> I like forgot about like obviously I remembered from like ninth grade that I was like really in love with Rose Lalonde but like I was listening to it and I was like I was not listening I was watching it and I was like oh, also this one yeah she's big sexy she's powerful <laughs> she's very powerful you'll like the next question that I have but first you have to hit me with the Ulysses question yeah this is my last question I don't know how many you have left but okay Here. why does Lyons Lyons stop Leopold outside the chemist and why does he then leave him alone is this the racehorse guy? Yeah. He's like, uh, can I have the paper to look at the racehorses? And then Leopold is like, I was going to throw like, it away anyway. And he's like, oh, fuck. Thank you. And he goes away. Yeah. Do you know why he was like, oh, fuck. Thank you. I read on Ulysses' guide that it's because one of the horses was named Throwaway or something. Yeah. There you and go. he was like, oh, my God. He's told me the horse answer. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we see a parallel with horse bullshit. Yeah. I had that same thought. <laughs> Okay, next Homestuck question. What special weapon does Snowman use, and what is its official title? Oh, I don't, um... And it's not a gun. Is it a, Could... like, whip? Yes, that's... I'll get... Maybe this should be a two-pointer. It's a whip. I, I... You might say the name, and I might recognize it, but I don't think I will. Well, the name is Black Inches. Absolutely not. Which is thematic and ironic for a reason. Do you know the reason? Um, There's another powerful weapon that is measured in 
colors and units of distance. Have we met it yet? Nope, but it's really important. You'll you'll see when we get there. You'll be like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I'm sure I will. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do my last one now. Yeah. Which troll do we briefly see at the end of the intermission? Car cat, right? Yes, car cat. Thought I might trip you up on that one. I thought you might second guess yourself. I mean, I did a little, <laughs> but I was like, no, I'm like, like, no, I know that. Like, I know that. <laughs> I recognize the trolls. I'm glad you recognize the trolls. <laughs> It's important as we continue uh, foraging into Homestuck. Okay, are you ready to do recaps? I'm ready to do recaps. Do you want to go first or me? Uh, I went first last time. You go. All right. Um, So for this episode, we read Ulysses episode five, which is called Lotus Eaters. Essentially, fuck, what even happened? (laughs) Leopold is wandering around Dublin doing some shit. He goes to the post office with this secret name card that he has, and he's got this pseudonym, and it's Henry Flower, and he, uh, like, has an illicit pen pal for some reason. And he reads a racy letter from her, and uh, we learn that Leopold is a sub, so uh, <laughs> that's some nice, <laughs> nice information. Um, he interacts with some dudes down on the street. There's some guy who's trying to talk to him about the funeral, I guess, and he's, like, trying to ignore him because he's trying to look at this hot lady getting into a carriage on the other side of the street or something. And later another guy comes up to him and is trying to talk to him about horse racing. And there's a part where he goes to an apothecary and he thinks about spices. And he also thinks about missionaries at some point. Um, God, I'm trying to... I think my minute's up. Yeah, your minute's up. So Jamie and I recorded that summary at the beginning of the episode because we forgot that usually we do questions before summaries. So that was a little jaunt into the past that we took together. And now we are returning to the present. Okay, I've done my summary in the past. (laughs) We're already embracing the intermission. I was going to say, I love Homestuck. (laughs) Maybe I'll leave it in like that. (laughs) Okay. Um, So this, the, I wrote a mini like, summary for myself while I was reading and the mini summary I wrote is basically all the midnight crew run around a house question mark trying to kill the felt who are involved in Tilda time shenanigans with varying degrees of plausibility slash verisimilitude I feel like that kind of covers it there's also snowball who's like super powerful and they can't kill because then the world will be destroyed and then they start like jumping through timelines a lot and they mention Lord English which is important what what's very important that I'm missing Okay, first of all, you said Tilda, as in Tilda Swinton, and I don't know if that's how you pronounce that character. Um, <laughs> Tilda? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you say it like that. Okay, like... I remember reading somewhere that Tilda was plural. Really? Oh, well, hell if I know. Tilda. I, I speak Spanish, I don't even know that. Yeah, I had a whole conversation about this with my Spanish ESL student about like how to pronounce it. Apparent okay, Google Dictionary says that it is pronounced tilde with a schwa. Since when? Since Google, but also I don't trust like Google. Wikipedia says it's either tilde or tilde. Can we start writing tilde Swinton as like a tilde and then Swinton? Tilda. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? Yeah, I think you pretty much got everything. Um it introduces there's a couple little Easter eggs that are Important as pieces of foreshadowing, but not that important in the grand scheme. Like, they're not plot pieces. It's just that we, well, I guess they are. We see Carcat, um, and we see Spade Slick descend, descending into the terminal to talk mm-hmm. to Carcat. Um, we also have the whole thing with Dai is trying to go to a timeline where Spade Slick is dead, and then he does that, and then it's like, wait, nothing exists anymore. So it's kind of foreshadowing the whole exile situation in general. Um Even though I believe at this point we're aware that exiles are on the future versions of the planets. But but we know at least by now that they're not on Earth. So that's important. Um, We get to see Lord English's coat. It's important. We're introduced to a lot of temporal mechanic bullshit that becomes important. And of course, a couple of the felt... The the Midnight Crew stays important. They stay important throughout the rest of the comic. And some of the felt characters come back and become important mostly in Collide. But other than that, thank you, got everything in your nice little summary. Wonderful. 
Okay. I have two very, very, very important things to, that I want to start with. The first right. is, today in my Irish literature class, we presented our research for our final papers. Ooh. <laughs> And I am writing my final paper on Is Homestuck the Internet's Ulysses? Of course, of course, of this course. Is a class of nine people, including me, three of us are homestucks. I don't know what the statistical like likelihood of having a third of a class that small be homestucks, but it's just the way it is. Run some crazy confidence intervals there, dude. Okay. You said you had two things? Yes, I do. This is like actual like comparison stuff. And I hope you noticed this because it's the most important thing I've ever read in Ulysses in my life. But you know the bit where where Leopold is in the chemist? Yes. And he's talking about all of the like um like medicines? Yes. So I was reading it and I was like, oh, you know what this reminds me of? And then there's literally the line, poison's the only cures. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Pharmacon. Pharmacon. It's in Ulysses. Oh my god. Like, I was reading the thing and I was like, I swear to god, if he says the word pharmacon, I'm gonna flip my shit. And he didn't. But he said poison's the only cure, and that's literally the same thing. I literally wrote it down in my notes and I was like, pharmacon. Me too. I wrote it down. Like, I have a list of important things to go over and it's the last one. And then I have it like bolded. Mimesis. <laughs> pharmacon. It's just, it's so important. Yes. That whole, the whole, al- well, I keep saying alchemy, the whole, the whole section where he was in the drugstore, I liked a lot. I was like, oh, yes, say all these sexy words at me. Yeah, my quote is from that section, I believe. Nice, nice. Okay, that was my most important comparison for Homestuck things. There's one of the first panels says, it's like, SS, go to mspaintadventures.com. And he like opens it and he starts like reading Homestuck. And I was like, I wrote a moment of silence for the lost meta because like, if you're reading on homestuck.com, that won't make any sense to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't even notice. I noticed that it looked like the old interface, but I didn't even think about the URL change. Yeah. It's so really real. Sad. A moment of silence. Okay. Jumping back to comparison. I think that for all the past episodes we've been doing, there's been a lot of like structural similarities between what the stories are doing as they're progressing. But I think at this point, it's pretty different because the epilogue kind of goes in a whole different direction and establishes some shit. And episode five of Ulysses just like keeps doing the the Leopold thing. Uh, Did I say the epilogue? You did say the epilogue. The intermission. (laughs) (laughs) You tell what Kira's been thinking about for the last... Two weeks. 17 days. (laughs) Yeah, you know exactly what I've been fucking thinking about. The intermission. The intermission goes in a whole different direction. Yes, I definitely think so. I mean, I think to some extent, individual structural overlaps are not super valid comparisons. Like, you can notice them, but you can notice structural overlaps between literally any two texts. Yeah. I really don't understand. I'm th- I'm going to get, like, if there's any actual, like, Joyce scholars listening to this podcast, they're going to hate me for saying this. Because I don't really understand why it needs to have not that many complete sentences. Because it's a stream of consciousness. Yeah. I listened to the audiobook for this one um, because I just couldn't, like, keep my eyes physically on the text. And I marked every place. Like, I put in brackets all of the stuff that was, like, Leopold's monologue because they read it in a different voice. And that was really helpful. Yeah, I was listening to the audiobook, too. Also, though, hot take, I just really don't like Leopold. He's just gross. Yeah, it's really interesting because I feel like before we got to the parts with Leopold, the internet was all like, Leopold's great. He's the main character. But I'm kind of getting a weird vibe. Yeah, and I feel like also like in my Irish lit class, at least, everyone like hated Stephen. They were like, oh, he's a prick. He's so annoying. And I think in Portrait, he's more annoying than he is in Ulysses. Maybe it's just the... <laughs> Maybe it's just like who we are as people, but like I loved Proteus. Like that was one of my, that was episode three. Like that was one of my favorite episodes, just because I like all the aesthetic theory and I like all of Stephen's like intellectual musings. Leopold, people are like he's an everyday man. He's just kind of you know living his life. And I'm like, I mean, I guess on one hand it's like realistic and like accurate and kind of a big mood that he's like staring at women all the time. But it's just like written about in a way that's like gross and makes me uncomfortable. And I would much rather read even if Stephen. I would much rather have Steven being pretentious than I would Leopold being, like, slimy. Slimy's a good word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a, yes, a very fair point. I wonder, I don't know, maybe he will become more likable later, or maybe it's just us because we're, like, Dirk and Rose stands or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, let's talk about 
let's talk about I feel like there's a lot of silliness going around going around going along going going on in both of them yeah um I copy pasted a couple really hilarious bits from Ulysses for example the bit where he's like and I yeah what and did that mean I underlined it because I was like I don't like I don't know what this means like what is that onomatopoeia of I don't know. I kind of imagine it look sounding like the void fish noise from the Adventure Zone. Oh yeah. I don't know. I, now I've taken it out of context, so I don't even know what it's supposed to be an onomatopoeia of. Let me find it. But okay. yeah, pretty buck wild, and there's a lot of silliness happening in the intermission too. Though it's like it's like pretty on par for usual Homestuck silliness. Punish me, please. Great weapon in their hands, more than doctor or solicitor. Women dying too. And I sh- 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 and did you ch- 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 Oh, <laughs> is it is it jerking off? <laughs> <laughs> is it? I mean, he's talking about his dick at the end of the chapter. Maybe it is jerking off. He's talking about no, because he's confession. Everyone wants to. Then I will tell you all. Penance, punish me, please. Great weapon in their hands, more than doctor or solicitor. Women dying to, and that's T O. Like women dying to do something. And I, and did you, and why did you look down at her ring to find an excuse? Whispering gallery walls have ears. Husband learned to his surprise. God's little joke. Then out she comes. Repentance skimmed skin deep. Lovely shame. So is it an onomatopoeia for (laughs) masturbation? (laughs) Quite possibly. Wow, I know what to start using in my fan fictions now. <laughs> Why use descriptive language and you can just go? <laughs> it's like what Hussey's like. If I if I put like a twist in, if you put a twist in a Dickens novel, you get a Pulitzer. It's like if you put like weird onomatopoeia in your boring Irish novel, then you get to be Ulysses. <laughs> yeah. But if you put it in your fan fiction, then you're not writing erotica correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I am. <laughs> redefining the genre i'm redefining the genre of fan fiction by just the whole pick is just a bunch of onomatopoeias and you kind of wait hold on <laughs> oh my oh, god no. oh my god i just had a world shattering thought yes is it every word just an onomatopoeia for what the word sounds like no why not because language inherently the words we use inherently have nothing to do with what they are. Nothing about apple reflects the sound an apple makes. But the word apple reflects the sound that the word apple makes. Like I'm saying written language ruined the meme. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm saying I'm saying onomatopoeias are the pharmacon. Okay, wait, let me th- Like if I write like no. Okay, here's a hot take. <laughs> the international phonetic alphabet is onomatopoeia for spoken language. I feel like, well, like what, what I guess what I'm trying to get at is because, like, especially the Brit, the British, the Latin alphabet in English is so symbolic that there's something like the reason that like onomatopoeia sometimes looks stupid or like looks like key smashes is because you're writing out the sounds you hear, not what the word is, mm. right? And I feel like. Like IP, when you're writing an IPA, you're literally writing the sound. So maybe to that end, it's like, haha, I'm writing the sounds that I'm making, not the word. But written language, especially in a language like, especially like English, or even more so, you think like Chinese, where like you're not writing the sound you're saying, saying you're writing a word that represents the meaning of the word you also speak. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So when when Joyce does that thing where he like smushed a bunch of words together, is that an onomatopoeia for words? An onomatopoeia for words, or like, are you talking about in Ulysses or in Finnegan's Wake when he makes all of the big like? No, in Ulysses. In Ulysses, that's what he did it a couple times. I didn't save any of them, but he always like combines like three words into one word because he's thinking them quickly. Oh right, right, right. I I still I think unless you write it to reflect, I think okay, I think a better argument would be that his like auditory puns, like remember the thing from like the second episode where it was like Pyrrhus but it was pronounced yeah. like, peer, like peers yes 
I feel like that maybe you could make some kind of argument for onomatopoeia, but I really feel like onomatopoeia has to be reflecting the sounds. And even if he's crunching a bunch of words together, he's still reflecting the meanings of the words, not the sounds that the words are making. And also like auditory puns are their own thing. They don't need to be onomatopoeia. Got it. I'm sorry to crush your onomatopoetic dreams. So the jury's still out on what's an onomatopoeia or not. I'm going to keep researching and see if I can stretch the definition to mean anything. (laughs) (laughs) But the jury's still out because Jay is a real linguist. Okay, this is incredibly unrelated, but I've been staring at it the whole time we were recording. Anyway. (laughs) Let's see what else. There was a bit in the um, Ulysses Guide where he says, Bloom removes his hat under the auspices of running his hands over his brow. And it's not the same word, but I was like, hit auspices. I thought the same thing. <laughs> same person. Um, I think there's a lot of dick in both of these readings. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, my, my final quote is about dick, so. Yeah, so is mine. <laughs> oh my god, really? Yeah, well, I mean, not, I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's really good. Is it the one from the very end? No. Oh. Okay. It's quite nonsensical, and I like it. I love nonsensical things. Oh, ooh, here's a really hot, boiling hot take. Okay. Um, this is, this harkens back to what we were talking about, about, like, Leopold being kind of a squeeze. Squeeze? I tried to say skis and sleaze at the same time. <laughs> a squeeze. Um, I think it was, like, Ulysses' Guide or something was saying, or maybe Spark Notes was, like, comparing in the last episode, which was um, Calypso, how, like, notice how the real Odysseus is super unfaithful, and then he has to return to his faithful wife at the end. But by contrast, Leopold, at least in Calypso, is, like, wanders around while his wife is being unfaithful. Ooh, I bet Joyce is being sexist. And it's, like, literally Leopold is also cheating on his wife yeah (laughs) like yeah that's some serious double standard shit there just because he's doing it through letter doesn't mean he's not being cheating on her yeah exactly i mean i don't know there were a lot of different places in this episode where i was like like a couple places where it would be like pointed out to me by like spark notes or ulysses guide where they were like oh this is like a reference to lotus eaters but there were quite a bit that i actually like picked up on my own and i was like oh lotus eaters we're talk about people being like languid and like not being able to do things on their own yeah definitely so that was very cool languid is a good word languid's a very good word sounds like language but it means lazy (laughs) of course you like it (laughs) sounds like language okay do you have anything else um no i think that's everything i had pharmacon we covered let's see Leopold being gross, we covered... Oh, you mentioned this during your um, summary, I think. We learned that Leopold is a sub. Did yes. we also say, though, that he was a prospect dreamer? Oh, we did. And here's the hot take. I don't actually think he's a sub. Yeah, I don't think so either. Martha's all like, mm, I'm gonna punish you. And he's like, what? That's a little weird. Yeah. Like, I think he's either just like... I think he's like maybe vanilla or just kind of like indifferent. Or maybe he's averse in denial. Aren't we all? <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> episode title. We're all just verses in denial. <laughs> There's a lot of episode titles we've got in the running here. Episode title. There's a lot of episode titles <laughs> we've got in the running here. <laughs> I'm so excited to see what it will be. Just you wait. Okay, ready to do quotes? I'm ready. Do My quote. <laughs> <laughs> Guess so. Do you want to do yours first? No, go ahead. Okay, my quote is this really lovely one. Everybody out of the goddamn way. You've got a hat full of bomb, a fist full of penis, and a head full of empty. Nice. (laughs) Which is me. That's, I'm so happy for you. Who says that? Who um, they're referring to? Club's Deuce says it, Mm -hmm. and Hussey says in the commentary that it's like the best quote in all of Homestuck. (laughs) <laughs> and i was like yeah you're fucking right okay this is my quote from page well 78 in my copy angry tulips with you darling man flower punish your cactus if you don't please pour forget me not how i long violets to dear roses when we soon anemone meet on naughty night stock wife martha's perfume i still don't understand what that's talking about but probably it's well sex. i'm gonna read it without the um without the names of the flowers except where they're important angry with you darling Punish your cactus if you don't. Please pour, if you don't forget me. 
how I long to basically how I long to when we soon meet. It's talking about masturbation, I believe. Um, just the bit about punishing your cactus. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what kind of Minecraft shit? It says man flower punish your cactus right in a row. Um, Dude, I love punishing my cactus. I think that's a horrible image. I'm going to write it into my next pick immediately. I hate that a lot. Um, Yeah. I just liked it because I was like, oh, I like how there's a bunch of flowers in there. And I was like, also, it's like really, really like kind of impenetrable. Hit. So like, Hit. <laughs> so it like just sounds cool. And then it's like just gross. I wrote, this is high key about masturbation and there's nothing any of us can do about it. <laughs> you probably Joyce. put some kind of warning at the beginning of the episode about how we talk about that a lot more this than is, we usually do. This is the warning that I'm editing into the beginning of the episode. We're going to talk about kinks and masturbation because Joyce talks about kinks and masturbation. You've been warned. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just travel back in time, put that in there. Yeah, sounds perfect. Yeah. Is there anything else logistical we need to cover? No, I don't think so. Um, we interviewed some folks at Anime Boston a couple weekends ago. Last weekend? Was it last? It was last weekend. Holy shit, it feels like a fucking lifetime It was ago. not last weekend. We're stupid. It was two weekends ago. I was going to say, it's been like a fucking year in my lifespan, considering I read the epilogues between then and now. You didn't. Oh, you did read them between then and now, but they came out before then. Yeah, I didn't read them while I was at Anime Boston because I wanted to like have an enjoyable time and not be lying on the ground. Um, yeah, that was smart. It was. Anyway, yeah, but so we interviewed some folks and we'll be putting up a special episode at some point, I guess. I feel like in that episode we should maybe talk about the fandom demographic survey too. Oh, yeah, that would be really good. Yeah, and then just sort of talk about the interviews, put in some clips, and um, do a little meta-analysis on Homestuck and Ulysses as media, stuff like that, fandom, the works. Thank you for listening to this episode of Homestuck, the Internet's Ulysses. For our next episode, we will be reading... What are we going to read next episode? We're reading episode six of... Definitely yes. episode six of Ulysses. And act oh. four, part one. Yes, act Homestuck, four is stuck, broken into two chunks. Up to sound Jack Ascend. Yes. One, six, six, eight. Yes. Thank you for listening. Uh, you can find the show on htiu.podbean.com or um, htiu.tumblr.com. You can also find us on Spotify, iTunes, and Google Play. So check out our social medias. Thanks for listening. Bye. See you next time on Hachoo.